Hey guys, and welcome to another tutorial here on mdocompositions.com. Now, um, this is the second tutorial in the um, first steps and preparation series. And this time we're going to take a look at this menu bar, I thought. But first let me show you a few things that I forgot to mention in the uh, first tutorial. So, one thing I forgot to mention is that you can also, um, instead of just move it across or along one axis, you can move it along or um, manipulate it along two axes at once, instead of three or just one. So the way you do that, you um, use one of the shortcuts, for example, let's say G. And now instead of just pressing set to move it along the set axis, you press, for example, shift set. And now you can move it along every axis besides set, okay? So you kind of move it um, within um, a, a plane, so to say. And the same goes for scale, okay? If you scale it, and then you hit shift C, then you can see it no longer scales along the set axis. Now, interestingly enough, it does not do that with rotation, okay? If you hit R and then you hit Z, it rotates around your Z axis. However, if you press Shift Z, you can see that the Z axis is no longer displayed, but still it rotates only around the Z axis. I'm not quite sure why that is. Um, I thought it would be more interesting if it would actually rotate around an axis in between the uh, Y and X axis something like a 45 degree angle, but it doesn't do that, so yeah, uh, can't help it. That's one very useful tool. And the other thing I forgot to mention, and that is probably quite crucial, is how to render your scene, okay? So we talked about um, what you need to make up a scene and how it is rendered. This is your object, this is your light source, and this is your camera. But we never actually did it. And first we should also uh, take a look at how to manipulate your camera. Um, you do that by... To go into uh, camera view, you press zero on your numpad. Okay? And to escape camera view, press either zero on your numpad again, or um, just press your middle mouse wheel and rotate around your scene and then you can also escape um, your camera view. Now, how to position your camera is also quite important because if you just do it like this it is quite difficult to actually see where you're positioning the camera so instead you just go to uh, camera view and now you hit G and now you can move it around this way or you can rotate it like this or you can press G and now to scale in and out or to, to zoom in and out well, or rather to move your camera towards or away from your object, just hit G and then press your middle mouse wheel and now drag your mouse forward and back and you can actually see how it um, goes towards and away from your cube. Um, and then there's the last and probably one of the most important things. If you have any kind of um, perspective or angle that you like, for example, like this, and you want to make um, an image from this angle, just hit Control alt 0 And now you can see your camera disappeared and is exactly where you are right now. And it's actually important that you are in um, a perspective view. Because if you do the same thing in orthographic view, for example like this, you're suddenly much closer to the object than you want to be. And that is because if you take a look at... Um, this scene for example. Now if you hit 5, you're probably suddenly much closer, okay? So there's a difference in distance um, between orthographic view and um, pr perspective view, okay? So to position your camera, toggle with numpad 5 into um, perspective view, um, circle around your scene until you like what you see and just press Control alt 0 on your numpad and then you can still just um, adjust um, the position of your camera. Now, another handy trick is actually 
um, to rotate around your 3D cursor. Uh, but actually, let's talk more about that um, in a few minutes. For now, we learned how to position your our camera. And now let's actually render our scene. So um, actually, in order to do that, let's go back to camera view with a zero on your numpad. And now you can see this cube and, the, and um, the lamp. And now let's just estimate how the scene is going to look. You will most likely see um, a plain cube in the middle of your uh, image. And it will be lighted from behind because the lamp is behind your cube. It will be dark on this side and lighter on this side. And to render a scene, you have a couple of options. You either hit render and then you choose between render image or render a whole animation. In this case, you would choose render image. However, as always, there's also a shortcut to achieve that. And that would be F12, as you can see here. So just press F12. And you can see it's already finished. And as you can see, it is dark on this side and also on this side. And it is uh, lighted on this side because the, the lamp shines on it from behind. Okay, now to escape this uh, render view, just hit escape. And now let's just see um, how it would look from this side. So remember, just hit Control Alt Zero. However, first you should toggle into um, perspective view because you can see you're completely wrong here. So you have to go back or like let's see, like this is perfect. Control Alt Zero. And now if we render it. It is very likely that this side will be lighted and this side will be black. So let's just move in a little bit, like this for example, and let's render this one. This time, well, once again with uh, F12, you should um, use shortcuts, it's a very good habit. And you can see it's actually true, this side is black and this side is um, lighted. Now, as you might have noticed, it is pretty unnatural to have such a pitch black side of the uh, cube. Now there are a couple of techniques to avoid that, to make it more realistic. However, for now, those are completely unimportant, so let's just forget about them. Okay, now let's move on to what we've actually planned. Um, let's take a look at this menu bar down here. Um, first of all, Something you should also know is that Blender is always made up of sub-windows, okay? So each one of those sections is a sub-window, so you can just adjust them however you want by uh, dragging those uh, borders to where you want them. Same goes for here, or for here, for example, okay? And each sub-window has one thing in common, and that is this button here. And you can see when you click on it, a certain menu. Same goes here, and same is uh, same cases here. Now, um, we said that we mainly focus on the 3D viewport for now, so let's forget all those other options. Let's just remember that this is your 3D view, and this is your 3D viewport, okay? Next, we have a minus sign that you can click, and it actually shows or hides those three menus. View, select and object. And actually for now let's hide them because we'll uh, come back to them at the end of this tutorial. But for now let's focus on those uh, more straightforward um, options. Now in this first um, option here you can actually choose between modes. And you can see right now you can only choose object mode. And that is because you are, uh, you've selected the camera. And the camera does apparently, as you can see right here, not have any other modes. So in order to use any, some other modes, you have to select an object, for example, a mesh. And you can see you got quite a couple of them. You got object mode, edit mode, sculpt, vertex, texture, and weight paint mode. Um, for now, let's focus on those first two. So if you um, hit edit mode, you are in edit mode. And now you can actually um, play around with those vertices. However, I'll talk more about this in the next tutorial. And you can actually um, go from object mode to edit mode with the tab button on your keyboard. So hit the tab button and you're once again in object mode. Now, as I said, let's not worry too much about those options, those modes. 
uh, but just so you know what it's all about. Now, the second thing are your viewport shading options. Um, textured, solid, wireframe and bounding box. And as I said before, right now your lamps are not taken into consideration as for how to um, light your cube. Um, if you change this to textured, it actually is. Now you can move your lamp around and you can see um, your um, cube is lighted accordingly. What it also does in this mode, if you have a texture and you've mapped it onto your cube uh, with UV un unwrapping, you can actually see how your texture is mapped onto the cube, but more on that later. Now, the second thing is solid view. This is your uh, standard view, port shading, as I said before. And um, the third one is wireframe, and that is pretty much what it implies. It's just, um, it just represents your object as, as a wireframe, because now you can actually see what's behind the object. However, this way, it is quite hard to um, see what is in the front, what's in the back. So, um, you usually don't use this unless, um, well, you need to uh, see it through objects or stuff like that. And the last one is bounding box, okay? Now, in case of the cube, it is the exact same thing. Because what this tries to do, it actually tries to make a box that uh, that is around the object to um, display it in a very, very simplified fashion. But since uh, this bounding box is a cube and our object is also a cube, there's not really a difference. However, if, for example, let's go back to um, solid view for now. And if, for example, you have a sphere, so let's add a sphere. And move it uh, across the x-axis over here. And now if you go to bounding box, you can see we have two cubes. Although this is a sphere. So what uh, the bounding box does, it just... Um, simplifies every object as long until it's just a cube that um, envelopes the uh, object, so to say. Probably uh, useful for a very complex scene, however, I've, I barely ever use it. And now, this is another rather important um, option here. And this one actually decides where, where your selection is. Right now, we have median point, I guess it's called, yeah, median point. Now this means that if we select two objects, the selection center will be, as you can see here, in the center of those two objects. If we select a third one, it's in the center of all three. Now if you go to active element, you can see it's this lamp. Now it's the sphere, and now it's the cube. And this method, active element, just um, uses the origin of your active element, which is, as I said before, the one that is um, outlined with a light gr light uh, orange, or just the one that's selected last. Um, and that object will actually be taken into consideration as for where the um, selection is going to appear. And then we always ha also have individual origins, and you can see it's once again in the center. Now, if you scale this, for example, scale, you can see, as opposed to median point, where it scales away from the um, selection center, with individual origins, as uh, the name already implies, everything, everything is scaled um, according to its uh, origin, to its own center. Then we have 3D cursor. This is very, very handy. For example, let's say you want to... Um, rotate those objects around your camera. You could obviously do this by just selecting the camera right now and go to um, active element and right now it would rotate around your camera. However, your camera is also rotated. So instead of doing that, just select your camera, press shift S, cursor to select it. Now select those other three objects again and now let's go to 3D cursor and you can see your selection center is exactly where the 3D cursor is. So now if you rotate, you also rotate around your camera, however the camera itself is not rotated. And the last one finally is bounding box center, okay? And that is also, um, hmm. how should I explain this? 
Just imagine that there's like a bounding box, as talked about before, around all three of those objects, and its center is actually where the selection is. And this is not the same as median point, you can see there's a difference there. Because the center of your bounding box is somewhere, if you imagine your bounding box to be um, somewhere around here, in this, in this way, and here like this, this is actually the center of your bounding box. Yeah, not so important. Um, I this is also one of those options I barely ever use. I think I've never used it before. However, um, it's good to know what it's here for. Okay, and finally, this option here um, that decides whether your whole object is manipulated or just its origin. Okay, so let's select the cube and let's leave it the way it is. Okay, now if you rotate it, you rotate the whole cube as as we're used to. But if you press this actually, and you rotate it, it doesn't rotate um, the mesh with it, it just... Actually, let me just see here... It actually doesn't rotate anything, I just noticed. And the same goes for the sphere and for for the camera also. However, if you if you translate it with the G, it actually moves it. And the reason for that is that only the... the um, Origin is manipulated. You can also see it in the description here. Manipulate center points. Um, that just means that the other things are not m being manipulated. So if it, this uh, happened to me a few times, I accidentally uh, clicked on this button, and then when I tried to actually um, rotate it, you can see the sphere isn't rotated because just the position of the origin is is changed. And you can see although the the sphere rotates around the center, it's just it doesn't, um, it's always, how should I explain this? Well, you can see it now it is rotated in this uh, way, and if you rotate the whole thing, it, it keeps its um, relative rotation. Somehow, somewhat like those, um, uh, what are they called? Um, big wheel, fairy wheels, fairy wheels, I guess. You know, where actually two persons can sit inside one of those boxes and they go around and... Uh, anyway, um, let's just go. Uh, let's just change that back to normal. So now, as used, as we're used to, um, the sphere rotates completely normal. Okay, now the next thing. What this does, actually, the first button, is it just makes the um, the axis disappear, okay? So if if you th if you find them annoying and if you use only shortcuts anyway, you can just make them disappear and now you have a much cleaner scene depending on what you're working on. Working on. However, if you have them um, active, if you have those um, um, what you call them, 3D manipulator widget. Okay, if you have the uh, 3D manipulator widget, manipulator widget. Um, activated, you have a couple of options here. Right now, if you um, use them, you can just translate your objects along one of, the, one of the axes. If you go to this one, rotate manipulator mode, as it implies, you can rotate it around one of the axes, X, around Y, or around Z. And same goes, and this is not very intuitive, for the scaling, okay? So if you um, use the z-axis here, you scale along the z-axis, y, and x. And your camera cannot be scaled so easily. Actually, it can, I just noticed. But it cannot be scaled just along one axis. It is always scaled along all the axes. At least that's what I believe. Let's just see if that's true. Yeah. You cannot just um, scale it along one axis, of course. Okay. Oh, and the reason for that is that um, the ratio from this side to this side is um, defined by those numbers you enter here in your um, properties panel under re render settings. Uh, more on that later, but just to explain why it cannot be scaled just along one axis because otherwise the aspect ratio would, would change and that's not a good thing. Okay, and now let's go back to um, translate manipul manipulator mode because that's the one you usually use. And now you have this global local gimbal normal and view axis um, I'm sorry um, modes or functions and what they do is right now it is global okay that means in this manipulator widget here 
um, the set axis points up, the y axis in this direction, the set in this direction, exactly as the global orientation of, of your whole scene is. Now, if you go to um, local, you can see it changed. And the reason is that we um, rotated the camera previously and um, those those values are saved. So now I can actually move it along one of the axes that the camera has um, in a local view, so to say. Locally it has different axis orientations than it does have glo than, than the global system has. And for example, if you go to view, now no matter how you look at your object, um, there's always the y axis going to point upwards and x uh, x to your right and with C actually, let's just change, try something, G and then Z. Okay, apparently if you use shortcuts it doesn't really consider um, those things. Let's go to local. G, Y, G, Y. Yeah, if you use the shortcuts it always translates the objects along the global um, axis. Um, so yeah, if you want to use this local, for example, you have to actually um, use it like this. Okay. Now, another very important thing is this here. And I think I've mentioned them before, those are layers. Okay. And as you can see, each button here represents one layer. So you've got um, 20 of them in total. And they are very useful. So for example, right now, the first layer is active. So the first layer is actually what you can see right here. And on this layer, you can see an orange dot. And that orange dot just means that the object selected last um, is on this layer. Um, now, something else I should mention first. With A on your keyboard, you can actually select all your objects in your scene or deselect all of them. And now you can see, no, right now nothing is selected, but the origin here already implies that the camera is your last selection, and therefore there's an orange dot on this first layer because that's what you lost, where your last selection is on. Now, for example, let's move the camera to the second layer. You can see the object you've selected last, the camera, is now on this layer. And you can see a gray dot on the first layer because this just implies that there are objects in on those this first layer, however you don't know how many or what kind of objects. And if you now go to the second layer, you can see everything disappears except for the camera because we already moved the camera to the second layer. And usually you just want to um, display all the layers where something's on, so just shift left click on the first layer and now um, both layers are displayed. And this is also rather important because if you render your scene, okay, it renders only those layers that are selected. So if you deselect the second layer, you can see there's nothing here that could be rendered. So that would be boring. Therefore, let's just move our sphere to the second layer. Now let's go to the second, la second layer and let's just hit F12. And you can see there's a sphere. But it's completely black, and that's because on this second layer we don't have any light sources. So what we're gonna do, let's just um, select both layers, hit F12, and you can see now all the things are rendered, including the light source, because um, they're all on the in the same c scene, though on uh, different layers, but both layers are selected, therefore everything is displayed. Okay, um, now I don't know what this option here does exactly, but I can assure you, you won't use it anytime soon. Um, if we should ever use it in one of the tutorials or tutorial series, I will inform you accordingly. And the next thing is quite cool, it's called proportional editing. Now, let's see, if I select this um, sphere and I scale it up, the, f the sphere is scaled, but nothing around it. Okay, so if I hit proportional editing, and now I scale this sphere, still nothing happens. But if now if I scroll up, you can see that there's kind of a uh, radius fall off, and you can with uh, scrolling your mouse wheel, you can actually um, change the radius. 
And now everything within this um, fall of radius will be um, scaled upwards. So you can see the further away, the the less, the weaker is uh, the scaling effect. Yeah. And by the way, um, whether an object is scaled or not, or how strongly it is scaled, is um, dependent on the position of the origin. Okay. So as you can see right here. Um, the cube isn't affected at all, although it is within uh, this, this falloff. And that's because um, its origin is not within the falloff. So if we scale it up just one one um, wheel scroll, so to say, you can see it is already affected a little bit. And if we scale it up even more, you can see, yeah, it is more, uh, more and more affected. Okay, and then you can see this falloff type. This is called a smooth falloff. There are other falloffs, like constant. This should mean just means that no matter how far away from the center it is, as long as it is within the fall of radius, it is affected by the same amount as the original um, selection. And there's also uh, random, which is quite funny to um, displace um, vertices in a random fashion, but more on that stuff later. Okay, um, let's just turn that off again. By the way, you can um, Activate or deactivate uh, proportional editing by hitting the O key on your keyboard. And Alt O for connected, however, that is not available in object mode, so more on that later. And now the snapping options. They are also pretty cool, because as you can guess, right now it is kind of hard to position your, um, let's go to top view, your objects anywhere. But you can see kind of a grid down here, okay? But... Um, let's go to a wireframe view. By the way, you can also toggle between wireframe view and solid view by hitting set on your keyboard. And now let's try to position this somewhere, for example here. But as you can see, it's very hard to get this right. So instead, what you do, you use those snapping options. Now we have grid activated, like this. And now if I move this around, it, it jumps from um, in increments, always one grid to the right or to the left. However, if we go closer and you can see it's not really where we want it to be. So first you have to hit Shift S and then go to Selection to Grid. And now you can see it will just um, snap to the next um, grid intersection, so to say. And from there on, with this option um, activated, you can actually position it very accurately. For example, over here. And I can see it is exactly where we want it to be. Perfect. But there are also a few other options. For example, you can use um, volume. And now if you move this, you can see it's got a few issues. But as soon as we actually um, hover over volume, it will um, snap to that volume in some way. It is pretty weird and you have to get used to it. So play around with it a little bit. Um, however, I don't really use it that often. And there are also options like, yeah, that, those are just um, some supplement options about how to exactly um, snap it to the uh, to the volume. Close it. You can also toggle center, for example. And now, it doesn't do anything, in my opinion. Let's just go back to closest. Okay, if you toggle it to center, it will actually. Um, make sure that the mouse is always in the center of your moved object and yeah not something i use a lot honestly um but here you can also go to um vertex for example now let's just see you can see it actually um snaps to the vertices of this um cube however this is kind of annoying to explain because we did not yet cover um the um edit mode but we're going to do that we're going to do that right away in the next tutorial Align rotation with the snapping target, not something I use very often. Um, and as you can see what it does, it actually um, rotates it. So, yeah, just uh, I'm just going to show you. If this is off, it will actually um, keep its orientation. And if you toggle that off, it will actually, or on, I'm never sure what's what. Okay, right now it's turned on. If you turn it on, you can actually, you can see that it re um, 
it rotates itself so it is actually rotated in a certain way to the vertice and if we go to face here and by the way this is a face which is made up of four vertices and now if you move this around you can see it actually um, can be positioned anywhere on this face and it automatically rotates itself the way you want it probably okay and by the way edge is just um, the um, connection between two vertices this is called an edge so if I go to edge and I move this you can actually see how it's um, oh, this is pretty funny the way it behaves right here <laughs> okay let's uh, deactivate this again and this too and let's go back to increment and those last two buttons are what we've already covered nearly um, you might have noticed in this menu here you've got render image and render animation and open chill render image and open chill render animation okay now um, the difference is if I go just to zero and if I render this you can see you got a more or less good looking scene I mean it's a rather boring scene but it looks well shaded and so on now if you go to open chill render image you can see it renders it exactly as it is displayed in your viewport so let's go to textured for now Rendered image oh my fault I have got or I can also use those buttons down here and you can see it isn't very spectacular open shell render and open shell render animation let's have if you have a very complex scene that can be used for two things either to make um, a cheap bad looking pre-version uh, just to um, sh see how everything looks and secondly if you have a very complex animation with lots of uh, geometry and your graphics card and your computer is unable to display it um, as a fluid motion you know then it's actually helpful to make sh make a open shell animation because that is very fast to calculate and then you can in real time see how everything looks how your animation looks and then once you're um, pleased with the result you can always just go ahead and make the final render okay now there's something else we wanted to discuss and those are these three menus and they are also pretty cool um, in each menu you can change things um, that are implied in this title here so in view you can actually change your viewport uh, the view in your viewport right now so you already know those here with a no control numpad 3 for um, left side view numpad 3 for right side view front view top view and so on and numpad 0 for camera view and then you also know the tool shelf and the properties panel properties panel is the one to your right tool shelf to tool shelf to your left and you can also um, you also know this um, this um, function here numpad 5 for perspective and or or orthographic view then navigation this is something I didn't yet show you but let's just do that um, let's use the shortcut from the very beginning so if you are for example in front view in front view and in um, orthographic view like this if you use 4, 6, 8 and 2 you can rotate around your scene in increments so 4 like this 2 like this, 6 like this 8 like this 2 like this okay let's go back to 1 and now if you use control and one of those buttons you can actually uh, move around your scene move move your scene without rotating so like this for four six eight and two and finally you can also zoom in and out with plus and minus on your numpad however seriously if you have like a scroll wheel or something you won't need that oh and another method to scroll in and out is just to hit control middle mouse wheel and then just drag your mouse around like this okay um, then we also have align views, um, ways to actually align your uh, view. Um, you also know the control alt numpad zero. You know shift C to represent your cursor, view selected and center view to cursor. Um, if you press um, the period on your um, numpad, you can see it actually focuses completely and zooms in on one object or on the camera, 
or whatever and with comp control plus it actually does whatever I'm not quite sure what it does here oh it actually centers your 3d cursor yeah pretty cool it, uh, or it centers the view uh, so the 3d cursor is in the middle and then you've got tons of um, other things. Clipping border. This is pretty cool. You can actually um, cut a, th a certain part of your scene out so just that it's displayed without deleting the rest. So clipping border. Let's just use it on here. So you can see like this. You can see only this part is actually shown. This is very handy to um, focus on certain details. And then once you're finished, just um, click on that function again or use Alt-B because Alt B is actually the shortcut to use it again and once again Alt B to um, make it disappear again and then you can for example um, center cursor in view, uh, no that's the wrong one what did I want to do align you to select it, okay this is just um, the same numpad numbers as before just this time you don't really um, go just into top view but with the shift this you can actually center it no, you don't. Okay, I have no idea what this does. I'm sure it's not very important. Um, then zoom border. This is pretty self-explaining. You just can make a border and it zooms into inside until it fills out your whole um, 3D space. Um, and some other things, global local, this is also pretty handy if you just want to manipulate just this cube for example just um, hit the slash button on your um, numpad and you can see it is only this one's display displayed everything else is disappears for now and if you hit num uh, the slash button again it reappears okay then you also have a couple of options playback animation with alt a instead of pressing play duplicate area into new a window that that way you can just um, if you do that you can see this area here is just um, duplicated and you can it you can move it to a separate screen in my case on the screen two and move it back or do it where do with it whatever you want and also very handy is toggle um, quad view you can see your 3d space is now divided into three separate um, into three views so you can actually look at it from each um, side and this is very handy if you want to model a complex um, object like for example um, a human head where you have like reference photos and stuff going on and then finally the last one is um, let's toggle out of quad view control alt q and the final one is um, toggle full screen so you can see now um, your whole blender window is just made up of one um, of one um, sub window and you can change back with control up arrow or actually control up and down arrow do the exact same thing okay now that's that's it for the view um, one thing that's probably handy is view all um, this way it just makes sure that everything can be viewed so if you're like far away from your scene just hit the home button on your numpad and you can see everything the way you want it now the select menu oh, this is a huge tutorial i just noticed anyway um borders th those are your options how to select things and this is a rather important and quite interesting options uh, there are a few quite interesting options in here so border select just means that everything within your um, drawn border is selected for example your cube and your lamp. Now the shortcut, pretty important here, is B. You'll use that a lot. B and everything is uh, inside is um, selected. Same goes for the next one, it's circle select, it's called C. So with uh, C you can actually select everything by clicking your life mouse wheel and everything that is um, in some way pa passes through this circle will be selected. Now um, keep in mind that only it, it only selects an object if you um, hover over the um, origin so with a deselect everything um, hit C and now you can left click and move around nothing happens until you um, pass the origin 
then deselect all is pretty self-explaining. Select deselect all with A, as I just told you. Inverse also pretty cool. Just select your cube and hit Control I to inverse your selection. Now everything besides the cube is selected. Uh, yeah. Then random. This way it just selects something. I thought. Yeah, actually it does. But in a rather um, well random fashion. Then mirror, what this does is it actually um, selects the object that is, um, well, the mirrored version of your original. Uh, let's me, let me make an ex uh, example. You have like a character, and you, it got it's got two legs, and one leg is called leg dot r, and one is called leg dot l. Now, if you select leg dot r and you then hit mirror, it'll um, select leg dot l. So just to demonstrate that real quick, let's duplicate this cube over here. Now in the properties panel, more about that later, I'll make an in-depth tutorial on the properties panel at some, at some later point. But here you can actually change the name of your object. Let's call this cube.r. Let's call this one cube.l. Okay. Now if you select this one and under select you go to mirror, you can see it selects its partner, so to say. Let's delete this one again. And now select all by layer. Um, pretty easy just go to select all by layer and now you can actually change the layers you want so since everything is on layer one if you have one selected in here you can see everything selected if you move this to layer two select select all by layer you can see with shift select select both layers you can see dependent on what layer is selected um, it will select those particular objects. Um, however, for some reason, it just, um, if you go to two and then back to one, it deselects those other layers. So just go to extend. And now if you shift click on two, you can actually, yeah, this doesn't really work all the time. I don't really know why. Let's just skip this one. But just so, so you know, this, this option exists. Then select all by type, mesh, curve, surface, armature, camera, lamp. Camera, lamp and meshes are probably the most important ones. Um, here you can select all by type. Yeah, pretty cool. Select camera, pretty uh, pretty self-explaining. And then those are a few advanced options to select things. So with grouped, okay, you can select all the objects that are, are in, that are in any way grouped with your selection. For example, um, all the children of that object, all the siblings, all the parents, or the one parent, you can only, usually only parent it to one object. Um, then same type, same layer, same group, same path, same color keying set. This is for animating actually. Uh, lots of options here. It's not important that you know all of them, just um, keep in mind that they exist. So if you need them at some later point, you know where to find them. Same goes for linked. You can actually um, have like 10 cubes and you set up a material for one of them. And then with linked, you can just link that material to all the other um, cubes. And if you then go to linked, if you select one of those cubes, go to linked here in the selection um, options and go to my fault um, material, every cube with the same material link will be selected. Same goes for object data, texture, particle system, and so on. And this last one is actually quite tricky. I'm not quite sure how it's supposed to work, but I'm just gonna show you what I found out. With select pattern, you can actually select objects according to um, a string of um, characters. So for example, let's type in here cube, and if you press enter, nothing happens. And, you, and I thought, hmm, since this is a pattern, if this pattern exists somewhere, it's supposed to select this cube, but it doesn't. So you actually have to select, uh, type in cube.r, and that's obviously the wrong one, dot L. And now it selects your cube. Or if you type in camera, it selects your camera. Um, not quite sure what that's supposed to be good for, but if you ever need it, um, you know where to find it. Now we're through with this one. Now it's, we'll, we'll move on to object. Oh boy, I'm, I'm hitting the one hour border soon enough. Um, 
undo and redo, pretty self-explaining. This one is just control Z, you know that already. And with redo, it's shift control Z and not control Y as it is in some other programs. It's shift control Z. So for example, if you move that over here, you make you press control Z to undo it. And then if you want it again, because you made a mistake with control Z, just type in, uh, just press shift control Z and it's back to where it was. Okay, then undo history. Um, let's just see what that does. You um, you toggle it, you, you you click on it, and then you can actually uh, redo something in uh, undo something in the past. For example, delete. I'm not sure if that actually did something right now. I don't really think it did. Um, undo history. Cube dot L. Yeah, and, and here's you, you cube back from before. But we don't need it, so let's just delete it. Um, then transform. Um, grab, move is G, rotate is R, scale is S, we know that already. To sphere, share, shear, or whatever that's called, and warp and push and pull are a little bit advanced. I'm probably going to cover them in a later tutorial, or not at all. I'm not sure. I, I, you rarely ever use them. They are sometimes handy, but uh, yeah, rarely. Move texture space and tell texture space you're never going to use that one. At least I believe so. Then mirror, you can actually mirror your um, object. I'm um, according to its origin point or something like that. Um, clear, you can actually clear its location. So for example, if you move this one over here, you can see the location changed. And now if you go to object, clear, Location, rotation, scale, and origin. All, then it'll be it'll reappear at its original position. As you can see, um, Alt G, Alt R, Alt S, and Alt O are the shortcuts. So let's just do that. Alt G, Alt R, Alt S, and Alt O. So now it's once again zero, 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 and so on. Then um, apply. This is a different one. Let's move it over here and rotate it a little bit. Okay. Now, if we would hit clear right now, it would go back to its default position. However, if we uh, press apply, you can actually apply location, rotation, and scale. Let's just do that real quick with a control A, location, control, oh, my fault, control A, rotation, control A, scale. And now you can see it's back to zero, zero, zero everywhere, but it's still not on its default position. And now if we go to clear, nothing will happen because its new de default position, so to say, is this position here. Then snap, this is actually um, something we already know quite well. Those are the snapping options for your cursor or for your um, object. Um, next thing, animation, insert keyframe, delete keyframe, we know that. And change keying set, that is a little bit advanced. Let's um, talk about that in, in some later tutorial. Duplicate objects, we know that already. Duplicate linked, not so important. Delete, we know that. Make proxy, unimportant right now make links. Um, this is actually control L, control L, and here's the menu for your links. A few things, for example materials, so you create one, one material and then you just link it to another material, uh, to another object, pretty cool. We will talk about that uh, in the future, I'm sure. Um, make dupliface, uh, not so important right now. Make local, not so important, make single user, uh, we don't need to know about that yet either. Parent, track, group, create new group, remove from groups um, is useful, especially in, for example, making a particle system and having a object um, distributed um, over a plane or some object according to a particle system and then you can use multiple um, objects um, to be um, used and they have to be in a group. Then constraints, pretty cool, but animating, not so important right now. Quick effects, uh, quick verb, quick smoke, quick smoke, quick fluid. Um, something we don't need to know right now. You can just make fur, explode, smoke, and fluid simulations um, with this um, quick, quick way to do it, and you already have a good base. Game, um, not important at all. This is about the game engine. I don't know. I've never used that. Control join is for joining objects. We know that already. Move to layer, we know that too. Show hide, ah, that's something I should uh, tell you about. Convert to is unimportant. But show and hide is pretty important. Let's say we have this cube 
and we are in this angle for some reason and we'd like to talk uh, we'd like to manipulate um, the lamp behind we can just select our cube and hit h for hide on our uh, keyboard and it will disappear and with alt h it will reappear okay now this has been a huge tutorial um, I hope it wasn't too in-depth. I just thought uh, if I make this very accurate, it'll help you um, in the future and so on. I hope I was right. Um, I hope you, you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, if you have any ideas, comments or some feedback or whatever, some tips for improvement and so on, please post it in the comments, in the comment section below the video. Um, or if you have a question, of course, uh, feel free to post it. Um, yeah, thank you for watching and see you next time.